The curfew that is now in force throughout the island will continue till 11 tomorrow morning. The police have been asked to enforce the curfew rigidly. Dear friends, this is a historic day. As I said in welcoming Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi this evening, his visit has been the most controversial visit by an Indian leader to Sri Lanka since Prince Vijaya landed on our shores 2,500 years ago. Prince Vijaya gave birth to the Singhala race. The agreement that Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi and I have signed, I hope will give a rebirth to the Singhala race because we have been torn by conflict, violence, death, and all the other depredations of human wickedness, especially in the North and the East. The agreement we have signed ends that. Within 96 hours, all arms used by those we have called terrorists have to be surrendered to the government. There has to be a cessation of hostilities. There has to be end of the mini war that we have unfortunately conducted for four years with 6,000 deaths unnecessarily of Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims, men and women, boys and girls. Under this agreement, the Indian government underwrites the arrangement that arms should be given up all weapons should be surrendered to the government and there should be no fighting. There should only be a restoration of civil law and order. What do we do in return? We create provincial councils in the nine provinces with own ministers, chief ministers and devolution of authority from the center. All this is done within the unity of Sri Lanka, within our constitution. We have allowed the North and the East to join together in one unit for a temporary period of time. Before the end of next year, by a referendum, the Eastern province can decide by one vote, by a majority vote, that they do not wish to be in this union. This authority we are given to all the other provinces, for any province to join up with an adjoining province. For example, Central Province, Uwa, and even Sabragamo can join together and if they wish within a year they can have a referendum and separate. I can't see the objection to giving provinces to join together if they have the right by the people's vote to separate. After this therefore there will be no fighting in the north and the east. Terrorism will be a thing of the past and peace will be restored once again to our land. This would mean a tremendous accession of wealth through the aid that the countries are giving, mean a tremendous accession of foreign investment. It will mean tourism looks up again and employment is available for our people. It will mean also the increase of wages to government servants who have been waiting for years to get what they deserve. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me. I do hope that all those who have been misled, misguided into using violence in this country, as has happened in the last two days, will mend their ways and help the government in the task of restoring peace and harmony and prosperity. Dear Sri Lankan friends, this is my first visit to your beautiful country. Yet, no Indian is ever a stranger in Sri Lanka. We in India have always thought of the people of Sri Lanka as friends, friends who cherish the same great ideals values and experiences. We have seen you as colleagues in our struggle for a new kind of world, a world not of dominance but of equality, a world not of exploitation but of compassion, a world not of discord and war but of harmony and peace. For some years now, your green and beautiful island so long a haven of tranquility has been rocked by violence and splattered with blood. Brother has killed brother. Innocents have died. No group, no community 
has been untouched by the loss of dear ones. There has been a growing revulsion against this cycle of violence. People have yearned for peace, for a respite from fear and trouble. As your poet, Koditawaku, has said so forcefully, stop it, stop that fight. He who died that day was one of us. Your president asked for our cooperation in his effort to restore trust and peace. We readily joined the quest, for we in India know the price that violence extracts. We have known the agony of partition. We have resolutely stood for the unity of Sri Lanka. We have worked with you to bring about reconciliation between the different communities of your country. Months of patient negotiations have borne fruit in the agreement which President Jayawardene and I signed today. It is an agreement, perhaps without parallel. It flows from centuries of affection and goodwill. Whether Tamil or Sinhala, Buddhist or Hindu, Christian or Muslim, there is a close relationship between your people and ours. The agreement holds out the promise of a strong, united, peaceful Sri Lanka, which is as much in our interest as it is in yours. It is a unity of hearts which guarantees the unity of a nation. Where there is discrimination and discord, a nation's security becomes fragile. Unity cannot be imposed. It has to arise from a sense of common belonging, common participation, common endeavor, and a common destiny. Both our countries have had the vision to choose democratic forms of government. Democracy is both the rule of the majority and the security of the minorities. No society can be wholly free of tension and friction, but democracy resolves them through discussion and accommodation. The agreement is not the conclusion of a journey, but a new beginning. We must work together closely to ensure its fair and determined implementation. There might be problems. There might be difficulties. Some may not like this agreement. What is important is that the narrow approach of thinking of exclusive identities should be eschewed for the larger national good. India, for its part, will be faithful to the letter and the spirit of the agreement. We shall carry out all our obligations. Sri Lanka and India are joint founders of the non-aligned movement. Our commitment to non-alignment arose out of the traditions and the ethos of our freedom struggle. Peace in our region depends crucially on all of us remaining non-aligned. It is this which has made this agreement possible. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters across the Pork Straits. Our friendship is enduring. Our affection is strong. We shall continue to work together to build a peaceful, prosperous future for our peoples. Jai Hind, Jai Sri Lanka, Jai Weva.